Okay, today for dinner, I wanted to make some tortillas, but I wanted to, I usually use um, a Walmart brand, and I'll insert the picture here, Walmart brand of um, tortilla mix that you just have to add some water and the pre-made mix, and then you make up your tortillas. So I also thought, well, let me try to make my own. So I Googled a recipe, how to make my own. And so I made both recipes today. And so um, I'll show you the process, what I did. And then uh, at the end, I'll show you the results. Okay, so here we go. So I'm gonna start with the Walmart version first. And that recipe just requires two cups of their flour mixture and then a half a cup of warm water. So the flour mixture already has, I guess, inside of it, baking powder, um, other items, whatever. Maybe it has salt in it, I don't know. But um, it's very easy, quick and easy. You basically just combine those two items and, and it's ready. So of course I sprinkle, sprinkle a little bit of flour on my counter before I take out my dough. And I leave it pretty crumbly before I actually start rolling out uh, before I start kneading the dough because I want to kind of incorporate it with my hands. I could have done this in the bowl, but I didn't. I did it on my counter. And then I also incorporate some of the flour that's on the counter just to help the dough, um, you know, in case it's sticky. If it's sticky, of course, I add a little bit more of my packaged product flour. If it was too wet, I'd have to add some more product as well. Um, but it's it's gotten to need it for about five minutes. It's gotten to a good uh, shape feeling. So I go ahead and cover it with a towel. And I'm just going to set it aside. Now this is the homemade version. So the homemade version has five ingredients total. It has three cups of all-purpose flour. Um, I, you can see I'm measuring that flour out uh, pretty carefully. I also like to aerate the flour before I start putting it in my cup so that flour is nice and fluffy. Um, but yeah, three cups of all-purpose flour uh, measured out into the correct measuring container. And then um, it requires one and a half teaspoons of sea salt, one teaspoon of baking powder, and then five tablespoons of unsalted butter softened. So at that, and also requires one cup of hot water. And I go ahead and start stirring with a quick spatula. Um, you could start using your hands at this point too. It's up really up to you, but you're basically just trying to incorporate everything together. And again, I need this for five minutes as well. I follow the same process as the other one, just kneading it uh, and just determining if it needs more flour, sprinkling flour on my counter, of course, and then I'm going to knead my dough on my counter for five minutes. And I've tried this technique before not using the five minutes and you really need to let it go a full five minutes. It doesn't turn out good if you don't need it for the full amount of time. You could also use your stand mixer and use the dough hook for this and allow it to do that. I've always done it by hand, but you know, I obviously could use my mixer as well. So when I get to a dough that I think feels um, nice and soft, I go ahead and put that into a container as well and cover that with a towel, and I let that sit for 15 minutes. I've let it sit for a little bit longer sometimes, and it even comes out even better, but um, so basically the next steps are just gonna show you the process of what happens with the dough. I always cut the dough into smaller pieces first, so I kind of can assess how many balls I'll be able to make, which then turns into a tortilla. Um, but sometimes I'll see, okay, the balls are a little big, so I'll take some away or some are small, add some more onto that ball, etc. This process, which you saw very fast, was just making the dough balls. And then they sit on my counter for a few minutes while I get this um, contraption ready. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. I basically recently bought this at Burlington's. Um, I've seen this for years at... Um, a grocery store in in texas called heb mainly in in the south san antonio they've just come to dallas now um but it's kind of a press i actually have it upside down here until i realize it um but it's a press and i'm this is my first few times using it i've used it a couple times already where i use the plastic bag just so it doesn't stick to the actual press um but i feel like it does a good job at doing a first flattening out stage 
Um, it's not 100% flat enough. It's still a pretty thick dough. I can feel it when I touch it, but it's a good start. So I like to use it just to get my tortilla started. So I don't have to go straight from a ball to rolling out myself. Um, this one, it tore a little bit. And you can see that, but the dough is so easy to use. You can definitely fix that very easily by just pinching it together. And when I roll it, I'll, I'll fix it definitely. So, okay. So I cut off the top of that plastic bag because I realized that was kind of in my way. And now I've got my system down where I'm rolling out. Now I did keep these two batches separate. Um, I can't tell you which one I'm working on right now because I didn't, I don't recall from just looking at the re you know, watching this video now, but while I was doing the process, I kept them very separate. So, and I actually had a helper, my producer helped me to, um, to actually cook these. And these are just cooked on a frying, in a frying pan on your stovetop, or if you have a griddle, obviously you can use that too. It's a pretty high heat, like medium high heat. Um, but from the, the process that, that, that flat iron thing just did is it got me to a good point where I felt comfortable um, to go ahead and continue from there to go ahead and um, roll out a little bit more with my rolling pin. It's important that your counter has flour on it. It's important that your flour doesn't have, your counter doesn't have too much flour. Sometimes I put flour on my rolling pin and making them into perfect circles is not easy. I don't know how my grandmothers used to do it, but they always made it look so easy. I think it's from years and years of practice, but I do my best I can. At the end of the day, they're going to taste delicious regardless to what shape they're in. So um, sometimes they don't all turn out perfectly round. Now, sometimes I don't always uh, make all of them turn into tortillas. Some of them I save and I will sometimes deep fry, make into buñuelos, and I love that too. But there's actually a separate buñuelo recipe, and I will make that one day and show that to you guys too. Anyway, I finished rolling them all out. Like I said, my producer helped me to actually cook them. And, uh, and we kept them all separate so that we would know which ones were the store-bought product and which ones were the completely homemade version of it. So this was just me rolling out the last few ones. Okay, so now, as you can see, I finished um, making both sets. And here are the two sets of tortillas that just got finished being rolled out and then cooked on the, on the stove top. So this is the Walmart brand. And I know it's gonna be hard for you to kind of tell from just looking at the camera, but let me tell you when you touch them, these feel much harder, almost like store-bought. Um, they're a little bit thicker because I it depends on how thin you roll them out and I didn't roll them out super, super thick. Um, but this is definitely the Walmart brand. The homemade brand, is a little bit thinner and a little floppier in shape. Um, I'll leave all the ingredients for both kinds down below so you can try this experiment yourself. I'm gonna take a minute here and just put a little bit of butter on each of them and do a little taste test for you too. Of course, um, you'll have to just believe me on how they taste, but I'm gonna try the Walmart version first. So I've just put a little butter on there. I'm gonna fold that in half. Just take a little piece here. I still have got a lot of flour on me. Uh, it's good. It's a little bit chewy. Because I left it a little thick, but it's very good. All right, let's try the homemade version. Maybe I'll get a little smaller piece because it was really thick. It was hard to chew that. All right, ooh, these are still very warm because these just came off the stove. Mm, much better, homemade. Um, this recipe actually had butter in it and a little bit of salt in it. And I think the Walmart version is missing that. So definitely these have a lot more flavor. Um, and basically it's the same amount of work because you're still um, making your dough, setting it aside, letting it sit for about, 15 minutes and then doing your rolling out process. So um, in my mind, these turned out much, much better. So I think in the future, I'll just make the homemade ones instead of doing the uh, Walmart version from now on. Mm -hmm. Let me show you one really close up here. Show you what it turned out looking like. It's still steaming you. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's very floppy and uh, very, 
good tasting as well. This recipe, recipe uh, made about 12. The Walmart recipe made about eight of them. So that was kind of the difference there as well. But both are good. I just think this one has a little bit more flavor. The homemade version made a little bit more flavor. I'll leave the recipes below and yeah, you can make them, try them out for yourself. Thanks, bye.